99% of what you see on YouTube videos about laser diodes, the videos are doctored. Now the reason they're doctored is because they want you to click on them so they can gain advertisement. Now, basically, watching a MOSFET Labs video, we will never make you wait for an ad or to click through an ad to see what we have to show you. We're going to rebuff some of the, the negativity or the doctored items that they show about laser dials. We're going to show you what's real and what's not real. And hopefully that will give you a better understanding when you go to purchase a laser diode and build your own laser gun. Such as a lot of the videos, or actually all of them, they got pharmaceutical fog in the room so that you see this bright laser beam shining down the down the hallway or across the room. Now, what you see normally is what you're going to see right here in pure air. There is no beam unless we put smoke in the air of some kind. So that's what we're going to discover today besides talking about laser drivers and the burning effects of laser diodes and the focusing ability with lenses. We're going to discuss all that and show you what's real and what's not. In a recent video I showed you how to design a current source to drive a laser diode or basically a laser diode driver. Now I understand that there's a lot of people that don't have soldering skills so this may be a little bit of a task even for them to accomplish and I understand that. The downside to this is that you can set it for one current by putting the resistors changing the values here. Uh, the thing is that if you have different laser diodes as I do with different current draws um, I have to keep changing the resistors out and this becomes a hassle. So for me this is becoming obsolete. The pro to this is that it only takes two batteries to run this and basically to run this you gotta have four batteries but because I need to change the current so much for different laser diodes this is obsolete for me and because people may not have the skills to build this let's set this aside right now and examine one of these little units from China they're about eight or nine dollars now previously I said these can blow up your laser diodes and they can if they're not adjusted correctly so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to adjust it and then we're gonna show you how to check it for overshoot which I will do that and that you will know that this is a safe unit to use on your hundred dollar laser diode and it's not going to burn it out because we understand that people are not going to be able to run an oscilloscope or have the funds to buy an oscilloscope so let's first adjust it to the current setting that we need now this right here is a 1.6 watt blue laser diode it's capable of burning holes through CDs lighting matches on fire and basically burning holes in small pieces of paper. So this has a current requirement of about 1.2 amps. You don't want to give it more than 1.6 or it'll burn it out. So to adjust this current for this, what we'll do is we'll simulate this laser diode here with these four 15 ohm resistors in parallel. And we'll just simply plug these into here and we'll test it this way first. What we do is we connect the voltmeter across it. So, so that you can just hopefully you can see the digits there. Alright. And then we'll power this unit up. First we can plug a switch into the TTL connector. When the switch is shorted, the unit is off. When we open the switch, the unit will fire up. This way we can leave the power onto it. So when we turn it on, we're going to read a voltage here. 4.62. So what we do is we'll take that voltage, divide the voltage by the 3.75 ohm resistors, what this amounts to and then we will get the current. Divide the voltage by the resistance to get the current which is 1.23 amps.
So that way we know it's going to run the laser dial without destroying it. To set the current on these, you simply adjust this little screw with the screwdriver, like so. You turn it clockwise to turn the current up, counterclockwise to turn the current down. This way, this can run just about any laser diode, except the real high-powered ones. And you can adjust it. You don't have to change out no resistors. It's easy to work. You just plug in the wires. Much simpler for someone to hook up rather than try to solder parts together and do all that. To measure overshoot, simply I connect the oscilloscope across the resistor where the laser diode would be. And when we turn on the power, we see that um, it shoots up to two, four, six volts. We're at two volts per division. So, and it's uh, that's about 1.6 amps. So it's within the maximum rating of the diode, so it's not going to damage it. But it only stays there for about maybe 100 microseconds. Um, and that's it, and then it drops back down. So this device is perfectly safe to use on your laser diode. So on this switching supply here, we saw that the voltage was shooting up a little bit to 6 volts. So to fix that, um, we just plug in a, a 22 ohm resistor into here. And then we turn on the power and we adjust this little screw, this little potentiometer right here. We adjust that so that we get the voltage to about 4.8 because the laser diode runs at 4.67 volts. So we want to just be a little bit above the laser diode voltage. And that will prevent the overshoot from happening. Then we can adjust our current setting with the proper resistance for the diode, which would be these 3.75 ohms. We can adjust the current for that by plugging those in here. And then we adjust the voltage, or the current rather. After adjusting the voltage on this, now we see there's virtually no overshoot at all. So this is an excellent little laser driver to use once they're adjusted properly. So these are a much better choice for me since I have different diodes of different currents. I can just set these with the screw and don't have to change out and solder and unsolder resistors. Efficiency. Blue diodes are about twice as efficient as green diodes. And it's pretty evident because on the green diode, I have to give it an amp and a half of current for a watt of optical output. On the blue diode, I give it 1.2 amps for an optical output of, of 1.6 watts. So there you have your efficiency in that. Your blue diodes are way cheaper, about 23 bucks to 120 bucks for a green diode. So unless you really want green, the color, I mean it's better just to use blue if you want to burn something up with it. Focusing lenses. Some lenses don't work. Like this long lens here, it says it's three elements. It doesn't want to focus and it seems like I have to put it in backwards to even to make it work. And then by the time I unscrew it out, it almost comes out all the way before it's ready to focus and it, then it falls out of the holder. So this is a piece of junk. So not everything is what they say it is. These are supposed to be G2 lenses. They work, but they don't seem to focus as good. I found other ones that focus better. There's no way to tell you which ones are going to focus good. It's basically a trial and error. Once you find one that works good, then you should buy a few of those if you want some lenses. This lens, I think, came with the, the product. And I think it works, but it's not as good as the ones that I found that are supposed to be three elements, but I think they're two elements is what I have in the lasers. This lens came with the laser too. And it works, but it's just a single lens. It may be plastic, it may not even be glass. There's no way to there's no way to tell. You know. So lenses, I mean you're gonna get ripped off there. I mean no one's gonna tell you that, but I'll tell you that right now. That's the blue and that's the green right there. You can see the hole looks kind of square. 
you're not going to get a perfect dot out of the diodes that are capable of burning with power output. They're basically a rectangle output and if you focus it for two feet it's not going to be focused at three feet or one feet. This is focused at about two feet, these little pinholes right here. But when I brought it up close to the laser it still did burn. It took a little bit longer but the hole was quite huge. So you're not going to burn a hole in something 20 feet away. That's a myth on this right now. This is very stupid. Shining the laser at a freeway. Across the ways. In through windows. All This is what gets people busted. And then putting on video for the cops to see it. This guy's shining a laser outside and is hitting a window over there and the light's coming back. This can damage your eyeballs. This is stupid idiotic stuff. Don't do this with a laser. And remember, wear your glasses, your laser protective glasses. I know I showed you some uh, laser drivers like this one right here, but I've discovered this one after that. This is far superior to this. This can handle basically diodes up to 5 watts of power and down to like a half watt of power. Um, it has a voltage adjustment, voltage and current and you can set this and this is a, a complete switching power supply all in one chip so I know that this here is a quality component just in itself. It needs a few additional components around the exterior of the perimeter of the circuit and then it's a complete power supply. So this is a constant current, constant voltage supply. You can use it to charge your lithium batteries if you wish, but to run a laser, it's awesome. This is, and we're gonna demonstrate that for you. Now, also what I discovered is this new type of laser holder. This is much bigger than the other laser holders that dissipates way more heat. And it's a simple screw together design too. Uh, we'll be showing more on this in the next video segment here in a moment. Um, what's nice about this regulator here is that it can run off just two batteries rather than having a 12 volt supply for uh, the other. Um, this guy right here needs 12 volts to work no matter what. Where this here can run off just two of these lithium batteries and to provide, uh, this is a 2.3 watt laser diode in here, a blue. And with just a micro switch, this is a complete, could be a complete laser gun just simply as those are the components right there. Now at about 17 feet, this 2.3 watt blue laser is capable of burning holes in paper that's colored. It won't ignite anything that's white, like it won't affect this over here, but uh, yellows and blacks and reds. And we burned several holes in the paper. It just took a few seconds, about five, and then afterwards the paper was basically smoldering. I had to come over here and put it out to prevent it from catching on fire. Now let's put something up to shoot at. Okay, we're going to initiate our 17 foot test on this black balloon. Here we go. That quick. Night test. Green laser night test. CD burn test. 2.3 watt blue diode. It's through. Basically it's focused at 17 feet. So the beam diameter is going to be bigger at roughly maybe four feet away but still it burned right through burn test I guess we're gonna put that out
what the camera will see if it was wearing the safety goggles. This is what you would see. It's not as impressive. Okay, so in this video, we're showing you what other laser videos don't show you. What does the beam look like if you have on the goggles? You can see the difference. It's actually, it's not very impressive for me to put goggles on in the house, but I have to, to protect my eyes. Now, the two outside tests in the night with the green and the blue laser were done without goggles because the beam is so far away that reflection back to my face isn't going to bother me. So under those circumstances, I can deem it safe for myself, but I don't recommend it for anybody else. Do at your own risk. But um, to continue, I don't think I did scope tests on this on video, but I did them before I hooked it up to the laser to make sure it's not going to burn it out. This thing has a soft start of about 80, about 800 microseconds, I think it was. But we're going to do scope tests on this on the next video, and I got some 5 watt laser diodes coming in that are blue, we're going to run those and see how those run. So remember, with MOSFET Labs, you will never have to click through an ad to see our videos and learn stuff. And we'll talk to you later. My name is Clay. Have a great day.